Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. In today's tutorial I'll be using Dynamo to generate straight edge rebars in a concrete slab as you can see on screen highlighted by the blue lines with my epic pen. This process might typically take a while but with Dynamo a few clicks will get the job done in seconds. First though we need to create a script for it. Start by opening a new Dynamo sheet. The first thing we'll need is the structural design Dynamo package which comes packed with custom nodes to simplify rebar creation. To install it head to the packages section, open package manager and search for struct. Once you find it go ahead and install it. Once installed the package will appear on the left side under the add-ons in the library. Expand the menu and you'll see a variety of nodes specifically designed to help with rebar creation in our project. Now let's set up our script. The goal is to create straight lines around the outer edge of a slab and then convert those lines into straight rebars. This will involve a bit of geometry manipulation and precision. We'll start by using the select face node. I'll select the top face of the slab and import it into Dynamo. Next I want to extract the perimeter of the surface with individual curves representing each edge. The surface perimeter curves node will handle that perfectly. To manipulate these curves further I'll first join them into a single continuous curve. After that I'll use the offset node to push the curve inward simulating the rebar cover for our slab. The number node will be used as an input to manually set the rebar cover distance for the concrete. Oops, wrong direction. I'll add a code block to multiply the rebar cover by negative one, ensuring the offset moves inward. Perfect, we'll set the cover to 50 millimeters. The next step is to move these lines down half the distance as the thickness of the slab. The geometry translate node will help move our lines. The input C translation will be based on the actual slab thickness. I will retrieve the thickness information directly from the slab object in Revit using the select modal element and it will help me extract data information from the selected object in our case the thickness. The next node element get parameter value by name to help us specify the exact parameter I would like to get. Important the string node contains the same name as the parameter in the object. The thickness I will now get 200. This value I will divide by 2 and multiply with minus 1 to get a negative value. This is a very good example of how Dynamo can be used to leverage Dynamo's computational power to automate or enhance workflows. If I change the thickness of our slab, the script when run will pick it up and change the input to the geometry translate node without us changing anything manually. The power of Dynamo. The curves have been copied and moved down the required distance so the curves are perfectly placed in the center of the slab. To make it easier to see every step of the process by generating the lines for our rebars, I will go ahead and hide some of the geometry created so only the last step is visible in view. I will do the surface by patch and surface perimeter curves one more time. These lines are the finished product when it comes to line geometry. Now I am going to create the rebars from the lines. I will be utilizing the package I installed at the start of this video. This node create from curve will create a new instance of a shape driven rebar element within the project from the lines created inside the dynamo environment. It is a long list with input values. Most of these nodes are found in the package structural design. Let's just go ahead and search for them and connect them to the main node. Now 
the last input value is a vector, a direction. I will use the surface normal at parameter with the selected surface as the input. The script is done. Well, the first part at least, hit run and see what we get. That is amazing. Our edge rebars have been created. I'm going to do that one more time. Delete the rebars, put the dynamo window next to the slab and once again hit run. Oh, need to write in the values for the input nodes. Just going to do that really fast and hit run. Yeah, that works great. Our rebars are generated with just one single click. Our rebars are generated with this script. I'm going to further develop it by implementing the option to automate the naming in the partition parameter. Search for the node element set parameter by name. This node is used to modify the value of a parameter. For a specified Revit element or elements, it allows you to dynamically change the values of instance parameters or type parameters for elements in a Revit model through Dynamo automation. The string name is partition, which is the name of the parameter I would like to change. Connect them all together and hit run. We'll select one of the rebars in the slab and there you go. The partition parameter is filled out for all the rebars just created. The cool part with this script is that it will work on any slab, no matter how many sides and forms it has. This particular slab has seven sides. And when I hit run, every edge have its rebar. The not so good part is that the rebars in the previous slab have been deleted. But as you will later discover, this will not be an issue when utilizing the dynamo player. So this script will not work when there is a hole in the slab. We'll get an error message in the polycurve by joint curves nodes because the curves do not form a closed loop. The task at hand is to remove the curves that are forming the hole from the list. I bet there are several ways to solve this, but this is my way. If you have a better solution, please write a comment about it. First, I would like to count the number of lines. Well, that did not work out. I think it is because this node can't read deeper down in the hierarchy of the previous node where the list is at level 2. The list flatten node takes a list with multiple levels of nesting and removes the nested structure returning a single list containing all elements, reducing the complexity in the list structures. Now the count node can read the information and give us the correct number of lines. I will subtract the manual input value, where I type in the number of circular holes there are in the slab. In our case there is one. Next, I will use the node list, take items to remove the circular curves from the list. So the node polycurve by joint curves can form a closed loop. I need to reverse the list so the circular curve ends up at the bottom of the list. Like that the desired curves is now removed from the list and I can proceed to connect the nodes. Hit run. Just got one rebar here. Let's change the lacing for the create from curve node to cross product. The lacing option controls how nodes handle list inputs. When working with multiple elements, it determines how data is processed when there are lists of differing lengths being fed into a node. Lacing defines how the node pairs items from multiple lists to perform operations. And it is crucial for controlling the behavior of list-based data flows in Dynamo scripts. If the hole is square, I need to input that there are four holes in the slab, which will remove four curves from the list. I enter the required values and hit run again. This creates the edge rebar. Before saving and closing the script, I'll get it ready for Dynamo Player. For each node with a modifiable input, I right click and change it to is input. Save the script on my desktop with a logical name. Close Dynamo and open up Dynamo Player. We now have Dynamo Player on the right side and a Revit with a 3D view on the left. Find our script and click it. The nodes that I changed to input are now displayed. I will go ahead and change the input parameters and hit run. Going to do that for all of our slab. And that is the end of this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.